In just 100 days, nearly 1 million people were murdered in a horrific genocide, making it one of the darkest chapters in modern African history. This is the story of Rwanda's descent into madness and how the world looked away. Make sure to stay until the end to understand how this small country rebuilt itself from unimaginable tragedy. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos illuminating pivotal events that shaped the Africa of today. The Rwandan genocide was a culmination of deep-rooted social, ethnic, and political tensions in Rwanda. With a history marked by ethnic divisions between the Hutu and Tutsi populations, the fragile peace established after years of colonial rule was shattered with the assassination of President Juvenal Habyarimana. This event ignited a wave of violence and unleashed long-standing hatred, resulting in a systematic campaign of extermination against the Tutsi minority. Over a span of just 100 days, an estimated 800,000 innocent lives were brutally taken, leaving the country in ruins and its population traumatized. Yet, beyond examining the horrifying scale of violence, this article will also delve into the resilience and healing process that has taken place since then, offering hope for a brighter future for Rwanda and all societies grappling with the consequences of such tragedies. 1. Understanding the historical background of the Rwandan genocide. 2. Examining the key factors that contributed to the outbreak of violence. 3. Exploring the devastating consequences of the genocide on Rwanda and its people. 4. Analyzing the international response and lessons learned from the genocide. 5. Reflecting on the steps taken towards healing and reconciliation in post-genocide Rwanda. 1. Understanding the historical background of the Rwandan genocide. The Rwandan genocide, which unfolded between April and July of 1994, was a dark chapter in the history of Africa. It was a mass slaughter of unprecedented proportions, resulting in the deaths of an estimated 800,000 to 1 million Tutsis and moderate Hutus. To truly comprehend the magnitude of these horrific events, one must examine the historical background that led to the outbreak of such violence. Rwanda, a small landlocked country in East Africa, has a complex ethnic makeup primarily consisting of two main groups, the Hutu and the Tutsi. Throughout history, these groups have coexisted in Rwanda, despite occasional tensions and power struggles. However, the colonial legacy left by the Belgians greatly exacerbated these divisions. During the colonial era, the Belgians instituted a system of racial identification, assigning Rwandans into distinct ethnic categories based on physical characteristics such as height and facial features. They designated the Tutsis as the superior race, attributing them with greater intelligence and physical prowess, while the Hutus were considered inferior. This racial divide became deeply entrenched in Rwandan society, leading to a hierarchical structure that favored the Tutsis in terms of opportunities and privileges. Following Rwanda's independence in 1962, power dynamics within the country shifted dramatically. The Hutus, who made up the majority of the population, gained political control. This shift in power dynamics, combined with decades of ethnic divisions rooted in Belgian colonial policies, created simmering tensions between the Hutus and the Tutsis. In the years leading up to the genocide, Rwanda faced a series of political crises that further exacerbated these tensions. In 1990, the Rwandan Patriotic Front RPF, composed mainly of Tutsis living in exile, launched an armed rebellion against the Hutu-dominated government. This conflict escalated over the next few years, resulting in sporadic violence and a growing sense of fear and instability. On April 6, 1994, the assassination of President Juvenal Habyarimana, a Hutu, acted as the catalyst for the genocide. Power-hungry extremists within the Hutu government immediately seized the opportunity to implement their long-planned genocide against the Tutsis. They used the assassination as a pretense to mobilize the general population, spreading hate-filled propaganda through radio broadcasts, encouraging ordinary Hutus to take up arms against their Tutsi neighbors. The ensuing violence was swift and brutal. Hutu extremists, armed with machetes and firearms, embarked on a systematic campaign to exterminate the Tutsis. Roadblocks were set up across the country, and lists of Tutsis and moderate Hutus were compiled and distributed to militias. Spurred on by a wave of fear and a dehumanizing ideology fueled by years of racial divisions, ordinary citizens turned on their neighbors, friends, and even family members. The international response to the genocide was overwhelmingly slow and inadequate. The United Nations and major powers failed to intervene effectively, leaving the Rwandan people to face the horror on their own. It was not until July 1994 that the advance of the RPF rebel forces finally put an end to the killing. The Rwandan genocide stands as a tragic testament to the consequences of deep-seated divisions fueled by colonial legacies, power struggles, and international inaction. It serves as a stark reminder of the horrors that can unfold. 2. 
examining the key factors that contributed to the outbreak of violence. The Rwandan genocide of 1994 remains one of the darkest chapters in modern African history. The outbreak of violence that engulfed the nation was a culmination of numerous factors, both historical and contemporary, which set the stage for a tragedy of unimaginable proportions. This section will delve into the key factors that played a pivotal role in contributing to the eruption of violence in Rwanda. Ethnic division and colonial legacy form the backdrop against which the genocide occurred. Rwanda is a country deeply divided along ethnic lines between the Hutu and Tutsi populations, with a history of tension and conflict. During the colonial era, Belgian colonizers imposed a policy of racial classification, further exacerbating divisions by distinguishing the Tutsi minority as a privileged group, fostering resentment among the majority Hutu population. These rigid categorizations laid the groundwork for long-standing ethnic tensions that would eventually erupt into violence. Political instability and power struggles within Rwanda's ruling elite intensified the already volatile environment. Following the country's independence in 1962, the Hutu majority gained political control, leading to a series of power shifts and tribal rivalries. The assassination of President Juvenal Habyarimana in April 1994, which sparked the genocide, was the culmination of long-standing tensions between the Hutu and Tutsi factions within the ruling government. The power vacuum left by Habyarimana's death provided the perfect opportunity for extremist elements within the Hutu population to enact their genocidal plans. Propaganda and dehumanization played a crucial role in fueling the flames of hatred and division. In the years leading up to the genocide, extremist Hutu leaders took advantage of media outlets and state-controlled radio stations to disseminate demonizing propaganda against the Tutsi population. These incendiary messages manipulated sentiments of fear and ethnic identity, dehumanizing the Tutsis and portraying them as a threat to society. Such propaganda campaigns ensured that the seeds of hatred were sown deep within the Rwandan society, making the outbreak of violence almost inevitable. Economic disparity and resource scarcity further compounded the tensions within Rwanda. The country's limited resources and overpopulation added strain to an already fragile society. With a high population density and limited arable land, competition for resources heightened existing grievances and amplified ethnic divisions. Poverty and economic hardship further fueled resentment, as the population became increasingly disillusioned with the government's inability to address societal challenges. These economic disparities created an environment ripe for conflict and exploitation by those seeking to exploit existing divisions. International indifference and inaction in the face of mounting tensions also played a significant role in the outbreak of violence. The international community ignored warning signs and failed to intervene effectively during the crisis, allowing the genocide to unfold with devastating consequences. Inadequate peacekeeping efforts and the reluctance of world powers to intervene to stop the bloodshed further exacerbated the tragedy. 3. Exploring the devastating consequences of the genocide on Rwanda and its people. The Rwandan genocide of 1994 left an indelible mark on the nation and its people, resulting in devastating consequences that continue to be felt today. The mass killings, which targeted the Tutsi ethnic group, not only claimed the lives of an estimated 800,000 individuals within a span of just 100 days but also shattered the social fabric of the country and left deep scars on the survivors. In this section, we will delve into the profound consequences of the genocide and its long-lasting impact on Rwanda and its people. One of the immediate consequences of the genocide was the displacement of an overwhelming number of people. Fearing for their lives, numerous Rwandans fled their homes and sought refuge in neighboring countries or internally displaced persons IDP, camps within Rwanda itself. This massive displacement led to an unparalleled humanitarian crisis, as these individuals face difficulties accessing basic necessities such as food, water, and shelter. The traumatizing experiences endured by those who survived the genocide left them severely mentally and physically scarred, requiring long-term psychological and medical support. In addition to the loss of human lives and the vast displacement, the Rwandan genocide also resulted in a significant disruption to the country's economy. Industries were decimated, and infrastructure was destroyed, leaving Rwanda in a state of economic chaos. The agricultural sector, which forms the backbone of the Rwandan economy, suffered immensely, as farmers were killed or driven away, and entire crop fields were abandoned. The destruction of commercial enterprises and the collapse of the tourism industry further exacerbated the economic crisis, pushing the country into a long period of reconstruction and recovery. The social consequences of the genocide were equally profound. The violence and brutality that swept through Rwanda tore apart families and communities, leaving deep divisions and strained relationships. Neighbors turned against neighbors, and friends became enemies. 
the sense of trust and unity that once existed eroded, leading to an atmosphere of suspicion and fear that persists to this day. Rebuilding social cohesion and fostering reconciliation has been a significant challenge for Rwanda, requiring tireless efforts to heal the wounds and forge a new path towards unity. The long-term trauma experienced by survivors of the genocide cannot be overstated. The physical and emotional scars left by the atrocities continue to affect individuals and their families, with many facing ongoing psychological and health issues. An entire generation grew up in the aftermath of the tragedy, having lost their parents, siblings, and relatives. These young survivors struggled to find their place in society, grappling with feelings of abandonment, grief, and survivor guilt. The loss of trust and faith in humanity has had a profound impact on their ability to form meaningful relationships and rebuild their lives. Despite the numerous challenges it has faced, Rwanda has made remarkable progress in its journey towards healing and recovery. Implementing a system of justice, particularly through the Gekika community courts, has been instrumental in addressing the crimes committed during the genocide and bringing perpetrators to justice. The government has also prioritized social and economic development, investing heavily in education, healthcare, and infrastructure. While the consequences of the genocide will never be fully erased, Rwanda has demonstrated resilience, determination, and the ability to rebuild itself from the depths of unimaginable tragedy. 4. Analyzing the international response and lessons learned from the genocide. The international response to the Rwandan genocide was a testament to the failure of the international community to intervene and prevent one of the most horrific atrocities of the 20th century. The genocide unfolded over a period of 100 days, during which an estimated 800,000 people, mostly Tutsis, were brutally massacred by extremist Hutus. The world watched in horror as the Rwandan people cried out for help, and yet, the response from the international community was shockingly inadequate. One of the key lessons learned from the genocide is the importance of early intervention in preventing mass atrocities. Despite clear warning signs and escalating violence leading up to the genocide, the international community failed to take decisive action. The United Nations mission in Rwanda, on Amir, was severely underfunded and ill-equipped to handle such a crisis. Moreover, the United Nations Security Council, which had the power to authorize stronger measures, failed to do so, largely due to political interests and a lack of consensus among member states. The inaction of the international community during the Rwandan genocide highlighted the need for better coordination and communication among nations. The lack of a unified response allowed the genocide to continue unabated, leaving a lasting impact on the Rwandan people and the world. It became painfully clear that multilateral organizations such as the United Nations must have the necessary resources, mandates, and political will to act swiftly and decisively in the face of mass atrocities. Another crucial lesson learned from the Rwandan genocide is the imperative of promoting peace and reconciliation in the aftermath of such devastating conflicts. The international community realized that simply ending the violence was not enough, efforts needed to be made to support the healing of the Rwandan society and prevent further cycles of violence. The need for transitional justice mechanisms, such as the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda ICTR, became apparent to hold those responsible for the genocide accountable and provide justice for the victims. The Rwandan genocide also highlighted the dangers of ethnic divisions and the urgent need for inclusive governance and nation building. The Hutu Tutsi ethnic divide had long been exploited by political elites, and it was this division that ultimately led to the genocide. The international community recognized the importance of inclusive political systems that respect the rights and dignity of all citizens, regardless of their ethnic background. Efforts were made to support Rwanda in rebuilding its institutions and fostering a sense of national unity and reconciliation. Overall, the international response to the Rwandan genocide was marred by failures and shortcomings. It was a stark reminder of the cost of inaction and the consequences of allowing mass atrocities to unfold. However, it also sparked a renewed commitment to preventing such atrocities and promoting peace and reconciliation in post-conflict societies. The lessons learned from the genocide continue to inform the policies and actions of the international community, as we strive to ensure that such horrors are never repeated. 5. Reflecting on the steps taken towards healing and reconciliation in post-genocide Rwanda. In the aftermath of the Rwandan genocide, which claimed the lives of roughly 800,000 people in just 100 days, Rwanda faced the daunting task of healing and reconciliation. The scars left behind were not only physical but also deeply ingrained in the hearts and minds of the survivors and the nation as a whole. However, the Rwandan people demonstrated remarkable resilience and determination in their pursuit of healing, forgiveness, and unity. One of the first steps towards healing and reconciliation was the establishment of the Gekika courts in 2001. 
These grassroots community courts were created to address the overwhelming number of genocide-related cases and to promote truth-telling and accountability. The Gekaka courts provided a space for both victims and perpetrators to tell their stories, seek justice, and find closure. They encouraged perpetrators to confess their crimes and ask for forgiveness, in exchange for reduced sentences. This approach played a crucial role in promoting reconciliation, as it allowed survivors to understand the motives behind the killings and perpetrators to face the consequences of their actions. Rwandan society also recognized the importance of addressing the trauma experienced by survivors and ensuring their psychosocial well-being. Efforts were made to provide counseling and support services to those affected by the genocide. Numerous organizations, such as the Rwanda Counseling and Support Services, RCSS, and Survivors Fund, SURF, were established to offer trauma counseling, educational support, and economic empowerment programs to survivors. By addressing the emotional wounds caused by the genocide, these initiatives played a vital role in rebuilding the shattered lives of survivors and fostering a sense of hope for the future. Another significant step towards healing and reconciliation was the implementation of the Ngando Solidarity Camps. These camps aim to bring together both survivors and perpetrators, as well as other members of the Rwandan society, in a safe and controlled environment. Through various activities, such as group discussions, workshops, and collective labor, participants were encouraged to interact and engage with one another, fostering empathy and understanding. The Ngando camps played a crucial role in breaking down barriers, challenging stereotypes, and promoting unity among different factions of Rwandan society. The Rwandan government also prioritized education as a tool for reconciliation. The curriculum was revised to promote a shared national identity and to educate students about the causes and consequences of the genocide. The objective was to ensure that future generations were aware of the past and could actively contribute to building a cohesive and tolerant society. Schools also implemented peace clubs and extracurricular activities that encouraged dialogue, cultural exchange, and conflict resolution, further enhancing the values of reconciliation and unity. In addition to these efforts, Rwanda has embarked on a process of national mourning and remembrance. The annual commemoration of the genocide serves as a reminder of the atrocities committed and provides an opportunity for the nation to come together in solidarity. Through memorial events, speeches, and testimonies, Rwandans honor the victims and reaffirm their commitment to never forget the past while striving for a brighter future. In conclusion, the Rwandan genocide remains a pivotal period in modern African history, marked by unimaginable tragedy and devastation. This genocide was not only a result of deeply entrenched ethnic tensions and political power struggles but also a failure of the international community to intervene and prevent the mass atrocities that unfolded. Today, as we reflect on this dark chapter, it is crucial to remember the importance of unity, reconciliation, and the pursuit of justice. The Rwandan genocide serves as a haunting reminder of the consequences that can occur when prejudice and hatred go unchecked. As we move forward, it is essential to learn from this tragic legacy and strive towards building a more inclusive and harmonious society, not only in Rwanda but also throughout the world.